Choline is a necessary nutrient for your memory. Choline is an essential nutrient for all activities in your brain related to your memory. Here's the issue. Most Americans, about 90%, do not get enough choline in their food and their diet according to NANES. NANES is a periodic health survey performed by the uh, U.S. government. Additionally, older people, but also pregnant women or breastfeeding women, They need more choline than the norm. So welcome to our Choline is an Essential Nutrient for Memory episode. Hi, my name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a licensed pharmacist who also has studied nutrition. I'm over here at Invite Health, and I'm also the scientific director, and I'd like to talk to you today about all the different things choline can do for your brain and your memory. Please be sure to subscribe to our Invite Health podcast, and please leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health, and all of the info on today's episode will be linked in the episode description, and you can visit Invite Health dot com forward slash podcast for more information so let's get going You need to have choline every day. Men need about 550 milligrams women need about 450 milligrams according to names like I mentioned before most of us Americans we do not get nearly enough from the food we eat. I'll go over that in a minute. Choline is neither a vitamin nor a mineral but it's an essential nutrient. It's loosely related to the B-complex of vitamins. It's water-soluble, so you must have it daily. Without sufficient choline, all the other nutrients you consume for your memory or any supplement you take for your memory will not work effectively. Choline is extremely safe. As I mentioned, it's water-soluble, so you run low on it every day because you lose it in your urine. Now, foods that contain choline, they may not be your first choice of foods as far as health. Eggs, the yolk of the egg. Beef, organ meats like liver. You don't want to eat liver. It's loaded with toxins because it's your major organ of detoxification. Uh, Kidneys, uh, we don't really eat that. Fish does have choline. Choline was recognized as an essential nutrient by the United States Institute of Medicine in 1998. Your body can't make enough, so you must get it from your food. You know, but who's going to eat enough eggs to get sufficient choline? You'd need three or four eggs to get enough choline for your brain. Uh, For instance, one egg has 186 milligrams of cholesterol, but only about 150 milligrams of choline. Eight, Eight ounces of steak or fish gives you about 174 milligrams of choline. There are supplements that dependably supply choline. Now, multiple vitamins generally add some choline, but they use choline by tartrate. Now, that's great for the body. Choline is needed for your heart to beat. Choline is needed for your muscles to function. It's needed for your nerves. It's needed for your liver health. So the choline typically used in a multivitamin is choline by tartrate or sometimes choline citrate. That's good for your body, your muscles, your heart your liver, your nerves, but it doesn't get into your brain very effectively. It's not very efficiently uh, transmitted into the brain. So there are other forms of choline that work better in the brain. Let's go to a quick break. Um, When we come back, I'll talk about better forms of choline for your brain and what does choline do for your brain in the first place. So let's go to a break. We'll be right back. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn Learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. 
Okay, welcome back to our episode, Choline, an essential nutrient for your memory. So what does choline do for your brain? Well, that's uh, really interesting because it's, it's fundamental. It's just so important for your brain. Choline is tagged with a, a tiny group, a tiny molecule called an acetyl group. And it becomes a very important messenger in your brain called acetylcholine. Uh, acetylcholine works throughout your brain. In fact, it works throughout your body. But we're talking about the brain. We're focusing on the brain on this in this episode. And the back part of your brain, the more primitive part of your brain that controls your 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 muscles and your balance and your coordination and your heart rhythm and your heart's ability to beat and your lungs' ability to breathe, uh, acetylcholine interacts with a second neurotransmitter. So let me explain what a neurotransmitter is. There's about 100 neurotransmitters in the brain that we've learned about so far. They, just a small amount of them, makes the brain work at any appropriate manner at the appropriate time. So in the back of the brain, acetylcholine, which is made out of choline, it's directly made out of choline, interacts with a second neurotransmitter called dopamine for your balance for the way you walk, for your mobility, for the way your muscles work. And the more advanced parts of your brain, acetylcholine is incredibly, incredibly important. It repairs your brain cells. This is a problem with some drugs. In fact, I plan on doing a separate, separate episode uh, how some drugs interact poorly with your brain. For instance, antihistamines have an unwanted side effect called an anticholinergic effect. They block the function of acetylcholine, and this prevents acetylcholine from doing the following for your brain, repairing your brain, transmission of messages, communication between brain cells, learning and memory. <laughs> Not good. We'll do, we'll do that in a separate episode because it's, it's uh, many, many drugs impact acetylcholine in the brain. So if you use a combination of these drugs, it, it can affect your memory could affect your brain health. We'll do that in a separate episode. So in the more advanced parts of your brain, acetylcholine is needed to repair the brain cells. In fact, if you lack acetylcholine, uh, more damage occurs in the white matter of your brain. Your white matter of your brain is basically your internet for your brain. It's where messages travel. It's also insulation for your memory cells. And uh, that's connected to uh, damage with the circulation in the brain. It's not good. Not a good thing. We'll talk about that later in the broadcast. Uh, so you need the uh, acetylcholine to repair the gray matter, the actual cells that do the learning and memory functions. So you need acetylcholine for learning. It interacts with two other neurotransmitters. So you can learn new chords on your guitar or a new song. It interacts with GABA and glutamate for learning. Remembering. Acetylcholine is all about remembering and memory. Solving problems. Acetylcholine interacts with the uh, neurotransmitters norepinephrine and dopamine so you could solve problems, you can focus, and you could take action on your solution. Acetylcholine levels drop with age. They're basically missing in the brains of people with, with dementia, especially Alzheimer's disease. So what does choline, when it's converted into acetylcholine, do for the brain? Everything to do with your memory. Now, What's the best source of choline? Remember that acetylcholine, which is made out of choline, it, it creates co communication between all of your brain cells, your billions of brain cells. That's how important it is. So you want to look at good sources of choline. One is alpha-GPC. Alpha-GPC, uh, it's available as a supplement. In fact, we have it in our product, Mind Synergy Powder, for brain health. But our brain also makes alpha-GPC. We actually make it in the brain. It combines with fish oils, the DHA from fish oils, and a second nutrient that you could get from legumes, legumes called phosphatidylserine. That's also found in krill oil for the cellular membrane. Now, the cellular membrane is the outside framework of your brain cell. It's, a, it, it's what allows the brain cell to function in the first place. So who needs alpha GPC? Uh, everyone over the age of 45. Every Anybody over the age of 45 years of age, uh, they can benefit from a good choline supplement. They should experience uh, improved alertness, improved brain energy, better focus, better memory. Because if you lack acetylcholine, your brain cells do not communicate clearly. 
You need acetylcholine. It allows thoughts to travel through your brain. And it allows the brain to communicate with your body. So it's needed for thinking, for memory, for learning, and focus and attention. So if you lack it, you have poor memory. But worse yet, you actually lose memory. You have memory loss. Uh, you develop brain fog, brain fatigue, poor learning skills, and actual death of brain cells. Let's go to another quick break. Uh, when we come back, we'll discuss other sources of choline to make acetylcholine for your memory. This podcast is brought to you by invitehealth.com. For over 20 years, Invite Health has provided premium quality supplements and expert advice you can trust. Now, first-time customers can enjoy an exclusive offer. Visit invitehealth.com slash podcast or click the link in this episode description. That's invitehealth.com slash podcast for your exclusive offer on Invite Health products. Invite Health offers the resources you need to make important decisions about your health. Chat live with degreed healthcare professionals, get product information, and find retail locations near you at invitehealth.com. You can also learn about our new genetic testing program and our exclusive Invite Fitness Wellness Program. Follow Invite Health on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to our podcast today. Now back to our episode. Okay, welcome back. We're discussing choline for your memory. I mentioned choline bitartrate and choline citrate. They're used in multivitamins and sometimes they're added to B-complex supplements. Uh, they're great for the body, for the choline, for the acetylcholine, but they don't really get into the brain that effectively. So we spoke about alpha-GPC, which has been used in human clinical trials. It supports brain health and, and memory. But there's also CDP choline. Besides alpha-GPC, there's CDP choline. It's also known as city choline. We use CDP choline in a product we have called cerebral care powder for memory and for brain health. Now, both CDP choline and alpha-GPC improve brain function and memory in people with memory loss. CDP choline improves memory and thinking skills in those over the age of 50, according to human clinical trials. It helps prevent a decline in your memory in older adults over the age of 50. But my favorite form of, pho of choline is phosphatidylcholine. That's my favorite form. Uh, you can get that in krill oil. It's my favorite form for your brain health. Phosphatidylcholine easily enters your brain. And it does other good things for your brain in addition to making acetylcholine, contributing to the formation of acetylcholine. We spoke about acetylcholine for your memory and brain repair and brain cell communication, etc. just a minute ago. So phosphatidylcholine easily enters your brain. You find it in good sources of krill, good, good forms of krill oil. It, it functions on the cellular membrane of your brain cell. That's the outer portion of your brain cell. It prevents brain cell decay. It interacts with a second nutrient on your cellular membrane called phosphatidylserine, and this sets off uh, a series of vibrations, literally a million a, a minute, that gives your brain cell energy, allows your brain cell to function. And phosphatidylcholine is very easily converted into acetylcholine for memory, for attention, for healing the gray matter, for protecting your white matter, for conversation between brain cells, for problem solving, for learning. Phosphatidylcholine has shown to be able to prevent the decay of brain cells that occurs with aging. And phosphatidylcholine is also converted into the CDP choline that we discussed a minute ago to create the outer structure of your brain cell for brain cell fluidity. In other words, you have younger functioning brain cells. It's turning back the clock on your brain cells. Um, because phosphatidylcholine and krill oil is attached to EPA and DHA, this is likely the best source of choline for your brain. According to Boston University School of Medicine, they published their findings in the journal Nutrients. Choline is an essential nutrient for your brain. In adults, it influences brain function, 
especially if it is phosphatidylcholine form, if, if choline is in the form of phosphatidylcholine, enhanced with EPA and DHA, just like in krill oil. It's associated with greater memory performance, and this is really important, resistance to cognitive decline, the form of memory loss we experience with aging. Now, phosphatidylcholine is missing in the brains of Alzheimer's disease patients. That's an important consideration. So here's some of the research. This is Finnish researchers from the University of Eastern Finland. They looked at 2,500 healthy men aged 42 to 60 starting in 1984. 26 years of evidence later, higher intake of phosphatidylcholine gave you a 28% lowered risk of developing dementia. This was any kind of dementia. Plus, the men with greater phosphatidylcholine intake did better on memory function tests. The Finnish researchers also concluded that phosphatidylcholine enhances mental performance and lowers your risk for dementia. Now, Boston University School of Medicine published their findings in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. They looked at 1,391 adults between the age of 36 to 83. It's part of the long-running Framingham Offspring Study, which is a pr prospective study. I love prospective studies. They enroll a huge population of people, 30,000, 50,000, 100,000, a half a million, and they take all kinds of data, and they, they give them checkups periodically throughout the prospective study. And they write down all kinds, their eating habits, their supplements, the drugs they have, the diseases they have, the diseases they develop. And you get a mountain of data out of that. For instance, uh, 10 years into a prospective study, they might get 1,000 adults who developed diabetes and 1,000 who did it. And they see what did they have in common. What were the people doing who didn't develop diabetes? They were probably eating better and exercising. What did the people do who did develop diabetes? They're probably not exercising and they're probably eating the wrong foods. So you get all kinds of data out of these prospective studies. They keep on examining the data again and again and again and again. It's very relevant to research because it really steers you in the right direction for doing additional studies. So when they looked at these almost 1,400 adults... Adults with a higher intake of choline perform better on memory tests and are less likely to develop health problems in their brain, the kind of health problems in the brain, the changes that contribute to developing dementia. They did MRI scans. They found that people with a low intake of choline are more likely to be on the road to mental decline, and choline was preventing white matter hyperintensities on the functional MRIs. Functional MRIs are very powerful MRIs showing the way the brain is functioning and circulation, et cetera, and what parts of the brain are lighting up with energy. White matter hyperintensities indicate brain vessel disease and also um, damage that's growing and spreading throughout the brain. So the choline intake was connected to healthier white matter, healthier great matter, better memory functions. It's all good. For more info, uh, you can listen to a, uh, a couple of episodes. I did uh, Krill Oil and Fish Oil for Brain Health. It's split into two episodes. Thank you for listening to the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com. Please subscribe and please leave us a review. Follow us on Twitter Instagram and Facebook at Invite Health. Hope to see you next time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. And thank you so much for listening.